In this video, I'm going to build a simple stats handler in Bolt Visual Scripting that will take in a scriptable object that contains basic data for a game agent. The data contains an agent name, speed, height, and color. If you missed the earlier video on creating the scriptable object template, check the link on the top right or the video description below. With that said, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new flow macro and I'll call it stats handler. Then on the first Bolt agent, I'm going to add a flow machine and drag in the new flow macro. I'm also going to add an object variable, which can be done in the variables window or in the variables component on the object itself. I'll call the variable stats and leave the type as null. I'm leaving it as null as Bolt seems to lose reference to the type when using prefabs or something. To be honest, I haven't quite figured out why, so I'm just going with a workaround that seems to require the fewest clicks. Now to smooth out the workflow with Bolt, I'm going to make a few changes to this scene. Essentially, Bolt is going to play a lot nicer if I use a prefab for the agents. So I'll drag the first Bolt agent into a prefab folder and then delete the second agent in the hierarchy. I'll then duplicate the prefab in the scene, moving it, changing its order in the hierarchy, and then renaming it. With that all done, I can get to editing the flow macro. In my case, I'll be editing the flow macro on the prefab in the project folder. For my way of thinking, this is the smoothest and easiest, but certainly not the only way. Opening the flow macro to full screen and clicking on the objects tab in the variables window, I can see that the stats variable is there, which it wouldn't be if I wasn't using a prefab. In my case, I'm only going to update the stats when the object is enabled. For your purposes, you might want a custom event, a start event, or maybe, but probably not, an update event. So I'll add an on enable event, and I'll also drag in a get variable unit that references the stats variable. The first thing I'm going to update is the name of the game object. So I'll drag out the flow from the on enable and search for game object name and choose the set option. From here, I need to load the name from the scriptable object. To do this in the way that I am will initially cause Bolt to throw a warning, but this will get resolved, so no worries. I'll right click and search for agent stats name and choose the get option. The underscore name references the data field and not the name of the scriptable object, which is an important distinction. If you get the wrong one, it's still gonna work, but you're gonna pull the wrong name and assign the wrong name to the agent. I'll connect the output of this to the game object name unit, like so. I'll also connect the reference to the stats variable. You'll notice that the agent stats name unit is orange, and this is due to Bolt not knowing the type of the stats variable. And again, it won't be a problem in the final implementation. Next, I'm going to set the speed of the nav mesh agent. So I'll drag out the flow and search for nav agent speed, and select the set option. I'll then search for agent stats speed and add the get unit. I'll connect it to the other units like so. At this point, the pattern of what I'm doing is hopefully clear or at least getting clearer. Moving on to the third data field, which is the height of the object, I'll drag out the flow and search for transform local scale to be able to resize the agent. Now in my case, I want to change the Y scale and I'm also assuming that the X and Z axes are gonna stay set at one. To do this, I'll add a new vector3 unit with the option to set the components individually. I'll then set the x and z values to 1, and the y value is going to be set based on the height data in the scriptable object. So I'll right click and search for agent stats height and choose the get option. I'll connect it to the y value of the vector3 as well as the stats unit, like so. The last piece is to set the material. So once again, I'll drag out the flow, and this time I'll search for their mesh renderer material. You may notice that there are two similar options. One is singular, the other is plural. The singular option gives access to the first material on the object, and in my case, I only have one material, so this is the option I want. On the other hand, the plural option gives access to the full array or list of materials that are on that object. Then right-clicking, I'll search for agent stats color and choose the get option. I'll connect its input and output like so. And that's it. It's a pretty simple example, but pulling data from a scriptable object is fairly straightforward when using Bolt. With the flow macro complete, I'll need to assign the scriptable object to each of the agents. In the variable window, I'll set the type to agent stats and drag in the scriptable objects from the project. I'll make sure to assign different scriptable objects to different agents. Then pushing play, I can see that the agents have adjusted their appearance based on the data. The agent's name, height, and color have all changed. If I open the nav mesh agent component, you can see that the speeds have also been adjusted. The final piece that I showed in the previous video was a random wander script. I created one in C-sharp and another in Bolt. 
Those scripts don't make use of the scriptable object, or at least they don't access the data on them. But if you'd like to see a video showing how to create a random wander effect, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video or better yet found it useful. If you did, please think about hitting the subscribe or like buttons. If you want to go further in supporting the channel, check out the links to my Discord and Patreon pages.